Welcome to SEMCAST at Concordia Seminary in St. Louis. I'm Dale Meyer. On SEMCAST, we cover a variety of topics, and not all of them are academic theology. Today, we're going to talk about popular culture. One of the most popular television programs today is called 24. Now, we're not necessarily recommending that everyone watch this program. It sometimes has graphic violence and does use occasional profanity. But our guest today says that the program has been a catalyst for his spiritual growth. Joining me is Tim Wieseman, and he has written about these experiences in the book, Jack Bowers, Having a Bad Day. Tim, thanks for joining us here on SEMCAST. And uh, uh, tell us how this television series has helped your spiritual life. Well, I like to look at uh, just everything that's going on around me and try to you know, let God speak to me in some way and see if, you know, it's such a hugely popular show. I realize, you know, it's 15 million people, ratings said anyway, that they watched the first couple episodes of this season. And uh, so I like to, to look at themes, whether it be in uh, movies or TV or other things that are going on in culture and uh, see how I can tie scripture into that and reach out to others. So you, t you reflect on whatever you see on the basis of the Bible. Well, I, th I think that's that's helpful as uh, I look at different themes, and uh, you know, I had a pastor many years ago who was able to do that in great ways, and, and it just really, <laughs> I, I, I thought, how does he see that? How does he do that? And mm -hmm. uh, so I started to, you know, really pray for those kinds of eyes of faith, and uh, so. One of the things in Jack Bauer's life is trust. Uh, have, have you in your own life and in watching the lives of people seen trust or lack of trust as a, as a great factor in spirituality? Yeah, I definitely think so. Um, Jack Bauer can't trust anyone, and sometimes we, uh, you know, go through that same kind of thing. We've been hurt by trust issues in our lives, maybe family member or friend, and so we take, start to take those kinds of trust issues, whether it be a, an emotional tie or, um, you know, things that have let us down, and sometimes we start to relate that then to our relationship with God. That's very easy to do, you know, if this person let me down, then, uh, you know, I don't know if I can trust God, and to forget that this is a God uh, who is indeed faithful, a God who says, I cannot lie, I'm never going to leave you or forsake you. I remember the... Uh the great spiritual writer Oswald Chambers made a point that when, when we depend, when we trust in some sinful person, which we all are, we're sure to be disappointed sooner or sure. later, but that God is the one who will never let us down, right. exactly what you're right. saying, and, and you see that in right. Jack Bauer. Uh, there's a quotation here that I'd like you to comment. Um, CTU agent, uh, CTU, I don't watch the show <laughs> very much. What does CTU a stand counter -terrorist for? Counter-terrorist unit. Counter-terrorist unit. Tony Almeida says, to tell you the truth, I don't know what to believe. And you, Tim, have written, maybe we've all got faith issues. What are you talking about? Yeah, I think Tony speaks for probably a lot of us, you know, because a lot of people, because we're bombarded day in and day out with all sorts of messages. And... Um, People love to tell you what they believe and what they, they kind of shape God as they want him to be. And, and uh, I think a lot of people just throw up their hands and go, I, I don't know what to believe anymore, I, you know. And uh, so, you know, it's getting back to, to God's word and the, the trust of God's word. But, um, you know, sometimes we're fickle in our faith and, and we've got those high moments and those low moments. And, uh, uh, but, you know, Satan loves to take those kinds of things and uh, the messages j just bombard us and you know, lead us into doubt and hopefully not further down the road. And doubt can be a blessing if you, if you, if, if you work through it, just as right. you said, with right. God's word. Uh, maybe talk to a Christian friend, talk to a pastor, sure. talk to someone who knows. So those low times actually can, in retrospect, uh, uh, be times of blessing. Sure, if you take doubts and use them to seek out the answers instead of moving so many times we have doubts and uh, sometimes it's even with anger or just uh, frustration we move away from God but if you use those kind of times to to move closer to God and seek out the answers you know that's the blessing you've also written a book uh, called swashbuckling faith swashbuckling faith Tim Wieseman and uh, in this you explore the biblical treasures in the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. <laughs> uh, your mind ranges all <laughs> over, doesn't it? Well, what did you learn here, swashbuckler? <laughs> there are some great lines and great themes. This one's based on the, the first movie. And uh, there, there are some lines that uh, are 
could be taken right out of, of Scripture. Uh, for instance, uh, one line is, not all treasure is silver and gold. You know, that sounds like it's right out of the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, I can't accomplish much by my onesies, by myself, Jack says. Um, he uses the word onesies. I like that. I had to listen to that a few times. What's he saying? You know, <laughs> can't accomplish much by myself. And uh, again, a great bridge point there to realizing, you know, that we can't anything on our own, you know, but to get our strength from, from God. Well, that demonstrates, I think, that, uh, I mean, God has given us all reason. Some of us use it more than others. <laughs> um, but, but a person does not have to know Jesus Christ to be able to exercise reason and come up with some good common sense. Right. On the other hand, that reason is never going to take us to Jesus Christ, that's and right. that's where the second half of the story, the best half of the story, is the revelation in the scriptures. Certainly. To which yeah. you comp always are comparing right. what, you're, you're, uh, what you're seeing on TV. Uh, tell me about the greed, creed, greed, 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 <laughs> creed. What is that? Yeah, the pirates, obviously, um, it's all about greed. Um, they're going to go after something, and they've got this treasure in mind. And what, what's great about that, I think, um, is the passion that they have. What we can learn from that is, you know, they've got this passion. They want to get the treasure, and they're going to do anything to get to it. In the same way, if we've got that passion in our faith to, you know, to, to, to keep our eye on the, on the goal of heaven and that treasure that we have in Jesus Christ, to, to live with that kind of a passion, you know, it's not in a greedy way, but uh, in, a, in a godly way. And so you change that, that greed to, you know, a passion for, for seeking out God's ways. The Sermon on the Mount, seek first the kingdom sure. of God and all these other things Jesus says will be added unto you. Right. Could you talk about the greed creed um, as you see it demonstrated in the consumerism of our society today? Yeah. Uh, credit cards maxed out, buying th big homes but no money to put furniture in. Could you compare the greed creed of the pirates to... It, it really is the same kind of a thing. Pirates not only go for for the treasure. There's a, a, a greed and a, a for life that they have, um, and certainly don't go about it in the right way. But today, like you said, it's uh, <laughs> we're bombarded with with messages and uh, just you know go after this, go after that. You gotta have this. You gotta have that. And uh, we fall into that trap and then you know we also kind of compare ourselves to other people and we're starting to look at what they have and we need that and we want that and uh, uh, a very common theme you know we're easily deceived definitely we really are and we can rationalize it here's oh, where yeah. our reason is not sure. doing us any favors we sure. rationalize that i have to have whatever it is i have yeah. have to have so uh, uh, uh for a living <laughs> you write mm -hmm. but you watch popular right. culture all the right. time. Uh, what are the dangers you see of, of us picking up messages from popular culture and unconsciously incorporating them into our lives? Yeah, there, there's a line there that has to be drawn that we don't step over it, obviously. But uh, I, what I go by really is what Paul did in, in Acts 17. What, uh, he went to Athens and started to look around their culture. What did the people know? And it's just idols everywhere. And he starts to look. This is their culture. He finds an idol that says to an unknown God. And so he takes that and he goes to the people, seeing what they know. And he also quotes one of their, their poets that they would understand. And he says, you know, this unknown God, I know him. <laughs> and, and creatively presents the gospel, you know, that they can, in a way they can understand, ties into what they, what they know. And, uh, you know, 24 and the Pirates movie are just huge in culture. I mean, people talk about it. You don't watch 24 and then, you know, don't say anything about it. You're talking about it. So, you know, and like I said, 15 million people. Here's a way that we can, uh, you know, be reaching out to, to other people and creatively share the gospel with what people know, what's around them in their culture. Okay, so that's Acts chapter 17. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe you're familiar with it. If not, uh, look it up. It's a, it's a very interesting story of how Paul witnessed. Um, and, and picking up on what you just said now, um, you have a theological training. Mm -hmm. You're a graduate of Concordia Seminary. Uh, what would you say to pastors about their witness? Should they incorporate Jack Bauer and the Pirates of the Caribbean and, and whatever is going on that our people are exposed to as a way a la Acts 17,
to get to the objective truth of God's word. Can you say something I, about that? Yeah, I think we have to be aware of what's around the people. You know, Jesus did that with the parables and teaching them about the kingdom of God. He'd take what they knew, you know, he took what they knew, he, you know, what they were familiar with, and taught them about the kingdom of God. And I think we can, you know, again, there's a line to be drawn there, but we got to know what the people know about what they're talking about every day um, and also give that as give it to them in a way to share with with unbelievers you know I've had a lot of response in the book people are saying oh I got a friend or a family member who's a huge fan of 24 and this is a great way because they tie into something they love mm -hmm. and then you know they to share that book and it's got the gospel in it and it's so. kind of like uh, um, meet the people where they're at sure but don't leave them there. Don't, yeah. <laughs> Which I, I think, because I do a lot of preaching, I think meet them where they're at, but don't leave them there. And that's exactly what yeah. you're saying. I have heard some, pat not uh, on, the, on the Internet, I was doing some research, and I've heard some pastors of different uh, faiths, uh, you know, preach about Jack Bauer's uh, an allegory kind of thing. Uh, Jack Bauer's some Christ figure. And, you know, I think we can, that's not at all what this book is about. You know, taking themes from the movie and the, the TV show and um, lines from it and then uh, sitting back and here's an unexpected really faith truth that we can, can grow from this scene. Are there other ways that uh, these uh, things, and, in, and your books too, you can make a pitch here, can be used as outreach tools? I think just being aware of, you know, like I said, praying for those kinds of eyes of faith where you can start to uh, see things around us where, you know, pay attention during the week as pastors are going uh, through their week to see, you know, how can I tie this in? Because it's what they know, what they're dealing with. Obviously, probably some of the people are dealing with it as, as well. And, uh, you know, you don't want to uh, take every thing in culture, but uh, I think there are some unexpected truths that we can can draw from this okay can everything in culture be used for outreach uh no okay, i mean <laughs> for example well, it's just some some things that are just totally uh you don't want to really take your people there <laughs> because you know you're going to lead it can can be leading them to watch something or to to look at something that really you know isn't in the least big godly, and God wouldn't want us to go there. And, and, and I know, like I said, the show, as you said at the opening, you know, certainly isn't a Christian one. There's, uh, it's a very intense show. And, uh, but, again, we got to know what the people are talking about. So, so you have to have your own filter to sure, think definitely. ahead whether this is going to be good or definitely. not so good on the person who is hearing certainly. the comparison certainly. I'm making. I'm reminded of a time when uh, the, the, the TV show Cheers was very mm -hmm. popular. And their uh, leading song was, uh, you want to go where everybody knows your name. Right. And I mentioned that as a cultural tie into whatever point I was making sure. the sermon. And one dear old lady walked out. She said, I don't want to hear about bars in church. <laughs> so there's, there is a caution to be sure. exercised there. Sure. And I, I couldn't convince her that I really didn't mean to. <laughs> didn't mean like but she sure. was thinking about bars and yeah, taverns yeah. during the whole rest of that sermon. Well, I, I want to thank you. I, what, what projects are you working on right now? Well, I'm uh, looking at another 24 book. I should be hearing the next week about uh, a follow-up, hopefully to do it on, on this current season. So it's really in tune. This was based on the first season and uh, you know get it while it's fresh in people's minds so okay and the title is Jack Bowers having a bad day by Tim Wiesman published by Cook Communications Cook Communications thanks Tim for being with us and for showing us how we might learn and grow through pop culture uh, your books are a great resource uh, for personal reading and even for small group studies maybe your small group would be interested for other great uh, resources, explore the Concordia Seminary website, www.csl.edu, and there you'll find a link to Tim's website as well. I'll see you next time on SEMCAST. <music>